Anything but with Kumari Silva is today at the iconic Montevideo Hotel. And this is my last show. We close anything but with this program. Uh, it's been a nice journey of two and a half years, but life has got to move on. And I saved this lady for my last show, my swan song on the program. Mariazel Cheryl Gunatilaka, or the other way around, or better known, of course, as Candy Lamisi. Mariazel, it's been years. Yes. I knew you since when you were like a 21 year old girl. It's as long as that. Now, we all know, the whole of Sri Lanka knows you as Candy Lamisi. Yeah. If not for that song, who on earth would you have been today? Um, just another bathroom singer, I guess, Kumar. Probably someone behind the keyboard or maybe behind the guitar. Uh, or just holding a mic and getting up on stage. But no one who would have made an impact. So you, you thank Clarence for that, obviously? Because he, he, he wrote the song for you. No, no. Clarence had nothing to do with Candy Lamy. See, I began to work with Clarence long after that. Uh, he so actually how did this did... song happen? Oh, that's... Father, no secret so anymore. That's right. That's right. The melody, uh, the tune, of course, is Cotton Fields, speeded up, sound like a six eight, and Cotton Fields, as you know, is is an old uh, African um, root song. So everybody sings it. Uh, people used to hum this, and this melody kind of I didn't know Cotton Fields. Kind of it stuck in my mind, and then of course when uh, I was with the band Emeralds at the time, and they had a second band called Blue Sapphires. What? Blue Sapphires. Blue Sapphires. So that was. That Is was, that what uh, hanging on your ear today? The Blue Sapphires. <laughs> 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 Looks like it, but uh, their second band we was we would perform together all the time, and uh, the drummer Kito Chandrasena, who was who is now residing in the USA picked up on this melody and then began to play around with words and then all kinds of funny things began to come out. And it kind of hit me that this would be the ideal time to do my own version of it. So picked it up, changed the words around, wrote a third and a fourth verse for it. And uh, I was singing this at um, Akasa Kadeh and various places. How old were you, were you at that time? Early 20s? Um, no, 17, 18. 17? Probably 17. As fragile as that? <laughs> fragile. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, no, you were very, very skinny. I mean, yes, I was extremely skinny. That's right. Hockey I mean, stick? That's what you were. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Fragile in a way, I would say that's right, Koma, because we were brought up cocooned and, you know, like brought up in cotton wool kind of thing. So when, when life really hit me, when I began to experience. The other side of life, it was very tough to handle. So that was how Candy Lamisi came about. It uh, it changed everything for me. While singing it at the at the Akasakade with my band at the time, Midnight Mist. Uh, my so father, was that the same song that we hear today? Yeah, it is. I it. it is. And there was my father who thought that it might be a good idea to make a recording of it. Um, none of us imagined that it would take off the way it did. None of us imagined that it would change my life. And it, it was just something to do. Just a recording. That was that. So like Minon's Kadalle Ati Mukiri Limage is yours. That's her yeah, theme. I mean, that's she's known for that. Exactly. For but then Minon was already a big name ah, okay, in okay, the industry. Okay, okay, you get what I mean? Yes, I was yes, not. Yes. I was not. I was just another singer. Aminon now, was already a big name when she did that. when other singers sing your song, who owns the song? I mean... I do. So do you object copyright? <laughs> they can't sing my song, this is my song. They want to pay me copyright fees. Do you do that? I don't ask for copyright fees, no. But I do ask for credit. Of course. I think that's very of fair. Course. I think that's very fair. I think it's extremely it's unethical and unprofessional of some people, especially youngsters, who take... Uh, our songs and um, try to make it theirs, giving the impression that they've done a version of it's it. Like the and whole world knows that this is your song. I mean, generations, so it's so. Generations do, the, that generation. Okay. But the next generation is not going to know that because the youngsters, let's take Gayugi for example. I'm, I'm talking about it, and Gayugi is something that I really worked hard for. Uh, and then you find Somebody comes and they do a version of it and then it goes on YouTube and it's on 
music.lk, it's on this, it's on that, it's on various things. And then suddenly it's not Mario Zell going to click a song anymore, it's somebody else's. So that is what I'm saying. And nowhere does it give the original singer, uh, and now I own the rights to it as well, doesn't give any credit where it is due. So, so you that don't is want money, you just want acknowledgement. This is so and so song, which is very yeah. ethical, I think, of course. So now, your journey as a singer, it's been long. Looking back many years, how has that journey been? You have then and you have, you have 17. How old are you now, by the You were 17 No, I'm then? not telling you. Not telling you, no. If your no. son is... Um... No, you can do the math <laughs> later. You can do the math later. Okay. So what was the journey like? Journey was not easy, Kumar, because, you know, um, starting out, there was a lot of competition. There was a lot of uh, backstabbing even at that time. Mm -hmm. Not to the degree there is now, but yes, there was. And when a youngster was coming out, a youngster, I mean, who didn't know anything about what the music industry was, all she wanted to do was to get on stage, sing a guitar around her neck and then sing. And that was um, actually... It was slashed. It was slashed. I've had um, bands that I was performing with left me and went for greener pastures. Uh, all apologies at the time, but uh, the people who took them over insisted and said, "No, we will give you the work, but so and so cannot be in your band." You and that, great. yeah, myself. So that that kind of hurt. I mean, it still would hurt anybody, mm -hmm. however toughened up you are or seasoned into the industry you are now. It will still hurt you. As a human being, it has to. So, But it also made me realize that nothing is permanent. Nobody stays with you forever. Uh, you, you are who you are. You are what you are. Uh, you are you. At the end of the day, no one stays with you. Even your shadow leaves you when there's no light. So you see... Um, are you a lonely person? I guess so, Kumai. In some ways, yes. This is why I, I sort of put myself heart and soul into my music, into whatever work I undertake. Um, be it, even if it's just cooking, I sort of put my heart and soul into it. So, um, loneliness is something, I suppose, that it hits you um, when, you're, when your only family, your son, your sister, is not with you. And they cannot be with you on special occasions like your birthday, Christmas. It's, uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, okay. Have you had, you must have had situations where going out to perform in various parts of Sri Lanka. People, ah, me, Marija, Neda, Kohamada, you know, people touching you. These simple kind of gestures like that. What did you feel? What do you feel? You know, people connecting, unknown people connecting with you. Your fans, obviously. Had I mean, it's, it's a very pleasant feeling because I mean to know that you are still loved after all these years, 52 years in the industry now, and you're loved and, and you're still remembered. And the so you're people in your early 70s then? I'll kill you, Kumar, so seriously. 52 years in the industry, do you do that? <laughs> 52 years in the industry, you were about 10 years when you started? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you're doing the maths now. <laughs> but um, it's, it's a nice feeling. Only thing is, you know, sometimes um, it, it, it borders on rudeness as well. What? Rudeness. Like, you know, like they, they poke you and they, you know, like they probably don't realize that they're not, they're not doing something, they're not, that they're doing something they're not supposed to do. But, um, well, you meet all kinds of people. Yes. What do you owe Clarence in your career as a musician, as a singer? Tutor, good teacher. Um, he was not musically qualified, as in he didn't have uh, exams behind him. On you know, he was he was not like that. He but learned he was from everybody. His output was amazing. Absolutely amazing. He learned from everybody. He learned from people like Kamal do you, Pereira. Do you, do you learn from people as well? I do. Up to now, yes. Um, some of the most uh, unusual situations I've, I've learned from. Unusual people, little children, what they do, how they do. Um, some of the most uh, unknown voices. You learn something all the time and you've got to be open to it. And that is something I've learned that 
you're never too old, you're never too big to adapt and adopt. So that's something I've, I've done all my life. Your long journey as a singer, any unforgettable, nasty incidents that might have happened along this journey? Uh, in Sri Lanka, overseas, wherever. Um, nasty that they really impacted you. Don't mention names of people. <laughs> but there are plenty out there for sure. No, I, I wouldn't want to really... Okay, unforgettable. Unforgettable, nasty, yeah. You know, sometimes you, whether it's in Sri Lanka or overseas, sometimes it's not a very nice thing when you... Um, when you have been promised or pledged fees uh, okay. and you know typical Sri Lankans well uh, it's not a very nice feeling like you go all the way there and then you find that you know something has not gone right uh, and then of course they come with the usual story of this happened that happened uh, couldn't sell the tickets. you can't fight either you yeah. cannot fight either so it's not a very good thing and um, hopefully all this will change um, unforgettable, lots of unforgettable incidents, like um, I suppose the most important one would be the fact that I almost lost my life twice. In Bandarabad. One at Noarelia and uh, one here in Colombo where presidential candidate Ramli Dzanayaka was on stage and I nearly lost my life there. But um, yeah, those are the memories that make you strong and make you keep going, uh, doing the things that you do. I love my work, I love my music. I can't imagine my life without music. That was my question. Without music in your life, who and what would you have been? No one, I guess, uh, Kumar. At the end of the day, um, music is a part of my life. It's a part of me. It's in my genes. It's like breathing. It's like waking up in the morning. It's second nature to me. Are so, you a trained singer? Yes, I am. Under I am. I trained under the late Estelle Denise until she was here in Sri Lanka and then of course I, I didn't consider going to anybody else. But on and off, Mary Ann David is one of my dearest friends. On and off I do talk to her and get advice from her. Um, so she helps me a lot. As a singer, are you still learning? Definitely. Uh, you never stop. You never stop. You learn all the time. Uh, I don't depend too much on YouTube videos. I prefer to talk to the, the experts uh, through practical experiences. And I think in that respect, Mary and David is one of the best we have in Sri Lanka. And um, it's a plus point being a friend. So. Mary Ann, you heard. My last question on sequence X. Marinel, are there any shortcuts to being a successful, famous singer as, as you are? Absolutely not. It's always practice, practice, practice and hard work. Do you still do? Yeah, I do. I do. There are times when I, I let myself down when I'm not prepared, obviously. And for that, I would be ever grateful to my father. I mean, I, if you read my biography on Wikipedia or whatever, you find how my father was like Sergeant Major. He would, it was a ritual. Uh, he'd wake me up at 5.30 in the morning, yank me out of bed practically at and a 10-year-old having to wake up. Oh, it's terrible. But that training that I got then, having to practice all of my songs, my entire repertoire, my entire pieces, exam pieces on my guitar, whatever it is that I was doing at the time, uh, that held me and sustained me up to now. So, yeah, it's, it's not an easy path to take. But if you travel the hard way, if you travel the hard path, I think you can make it. Thank you so much. Very interesting. I learned a lot about the life of the singer. Sequence X, anything but Kumalis. But today is Valentine's Day. Here's a very colorful outfit Madam is wearing on the show. And my red stomach hiding cushion. I love these cushions. The Mount Avenue Hotel, a beautiful lobby here. Uh, sequence X, we catch you with Sequence Y. We talked all to Marizel all about her life and work the bio data, the Kade chat as we call it. So catch you soon on the show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To keep up with the pals of Sri Lanka, you can subscribe to our channel here. To watch our latest videos, click here and here. Keep living it.